It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman, and joining us to talk about a six-day personal retreat that you can take, a nice little book that will guide you through it, is Father Jeffrey Kirby. Thanks for being here, Father Kirby. My pleasure. Good to be on the show. This retreat is actually based on these writings of Father Jean-Pierre. Can you tell us a little bit about who Father Jean-Pierre was and how to pronounce his last name? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, when we think of the uh, spiritual life, Unfortunately, uh, Father Jean-Pierre de Cassade doesn't come to mind. That's a kind of a real tongue twister there, um, de Cassade. And so while he's not one of the maybe more popular, he is actually one of the more prominent writers in our spiritual tradition. He wrote about 250 years ago, right after the massive religious wars in Europe. Uh, he's one of the early first generations of Jesuits and was called to be a chaplain to the Visitation Sisters. And some might recall that the Visitation Sisters were founded by St. Francis de Sales, who was also a great master in the spiritual life. So Father de Cassad, not only did he have really good friends and live at a really good time in terms of reform, but also he applied and spoke about many aspects of the spiritual life that were, for his day, very creative. So he talked about vocation, he talked about the balance between the active life and the contemplative life. He spoke about how to find God in the midst of suffering. So many things that perhaps we might assume to be more common aspects of our spiritual tradition actually are indebted to Father de Cassad. And how did you first encounter Father de Cassad's writing? Yes, I was an underclassman at Franciscan University in Steubenville. Someone said, oh, you got to read this book. And truth be told, I picked it up and started reading and I thought, this is boring. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's an older language. He he was steeped in in French uh, scholastic thought, uh, which was the prominent theology and philosophy at that time. And and really what he was talking about, I I perhaps at that point had kind of a relatively comfortable life. Uh, Hmm. Later in life, uh, after kind of life had, you know, swung a few and kind of given me some punches and scars, I picked up De Cassad again and found him to be incredibly enlightening and helpful, especially his understanding and approach to suffering. So we've kind of had a, a checkered past, uh, Father De Cassad and I, but, <laughs> but now I consider him one of my spiritual friends. And why do you think he's making a, a bit of a comeback and becoming so popular again today? I think as we are so busy and, and multitasking and so distracted, in our world, the idea of living in the present moment. So Father De Cassad coined the term, the sacrament of the present moment. Hmm. The idea of slowing down, being patient, and just being right here, right now, is in our day in the West, very revolutionary, right? You know, people are trying to do three or four things at once, you know, they're, uh, and sometimes even to cause even great uh, danger, like in terms of texting and driving, and, you know, and, and just the idea that, no, we have to do two or three things at one time. We have to be productive. We have to get this done. We have to go this kind of uh, rat race. Uh, Father De Cassad is extremely countercultural. And, and I think people find in his writings an oasis and an encouragement. Yeah. What made you want to write this book, a personal retreat that's based on Father De Cassad's writings? Yeah. Going back to what we were just talking about, I've seen pastorally the consequences of a life of distraction and the life that flows from that, which is a life of fragmentation. And I've seen the consequences of that in marriages, in families, workplaces, in our society. I've seen it in broken hearts, smashed hearts uh, in the midst of our society. And so I I just felt that by bringing Father De Cassad's writing into a more popular audience in a more popular way, it can help people people to, once again, just appreciate the present moment. One, One of the things Father De Cassad emphasizes this is, you know, God is the eternal now. God is not in the past. God is not in the future. God is right here, right now. And so use this time, use this grace that's given in order to do your best to surrender to divine providence and to be an instrument of divine providence. And I just think that's a powerful message for all of us today. How do you think we get that wrong sometimes? I, I just think in our fallenness, we, you know, we replace holiness with efficiency, we replace mm. dignity uh, with utility. <laughs> uh, we get so distracted and start to think that we control the world. I mean, I, I think that drive in our own hearts to constantly try to rebuild the Tower of Babel 
to rebuild our own kingdom is always there. And, and because of that, uh, to whatever degree uh, it's intentional or not, yeah, I think that drive just makes us completely forget the moment. Uh, there are people who can experience powerful things, but never reflect on them or never truly experience them. I mean, how oftentimes do we see something, you know, great and everyone's holding a phone, recording it or taking pictures of it? It's like, put your phone right. down, <laughs> you know, and just experience this now, like be here. And, and truth be told, it's funny, is most people who take pictures or videos, no one really cares. Right. right. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you never go back and look at them. Exactly. Yeah. You know? So we miss the moment. We don't get to reflect on it. And Father De Casada has a very different message. It's like, just be here, receive the grace now, and realize that God desires to be with you right here, right now, wherever that might be, washing dishes or doing the laundry or driving uh, in a car or having other mundane tasks or whether it's suffering or whether it's having great joy and accomplishment, whatever it is, wherever it is, God is with us. And, and Father De Casada says, you know, claim that moment. We're talking about Be Not Troubled, a six-day personal retreat, and we're talking with Father Jeffrey Kirby, who put this together based on Father Jean-Pierre Descassades' writings. And what are the six days, which maybe we'll get to this in a little bit. It doesn't have to necessarily be done in six days. You've got a bunch of different suggestions on how you can do this. But what are the six different chapters or topics that you cover? Yeah, so the six days, I mean, and truth be told, Father De Kassad's book was originally given as a retreat to a group of sisters. Just to give you an example, they were so moved by them, they held those notes from his retreat for over 100 years before they were eventually put in a book. Huh. So, so truth be told, the days kind of blur a little bit, but it basically begins with the first part of just acknowledging life in the here and now. And then it's understanding suffering in the midst of that. Then it's a call to be an instrument of providence in the terms of exercising virtue, fighting against evil. It also then moves into understanding what the Carmelite tradition calls dark night of the senses or dark night of the soul. And then it concludes with, okay, now go and do it. So uh, the themes somewhat blur between the six days. Of course, there's emphases in each one. But there's definitely this move of be here, see everything you do in light of God's grace, now understand suffering, now understand the role of virtue, and then there's almost this um, commissioning on the sixth day of now go and do it, or do it better, or do it more deeply. Let's take one of those, like understanding suffering, for example. How do we understand suffering? Yes, well, oftentimes, especially in our Western world, we create such artificial realities, and we have the sense of entitlement that we're always supposed to be healthy, everything's always supposed to be well, we're always supposed to have enough money, hmm. people are always supposed to do whatever we want. And, you know, outside of the West, no one thinks that. <laughs> you know what I mean? right. Outside of the West, I mean, they're lucky to just have running water and hot water that they don't have to work to get mm -hmm. uh, it, it are considered daily blessings. So I think in the West, we've created this kind of comfort zone where we dwell. And, and so anything that happens can be overwhelming in terms of what the rest of the world would consider rather uh, mundane uh, or kind of uh, suffering or in terms of the day to day. But whatever the suffering might be, they could thought that, you know, we accept each moment for whatever it is. And we realize that this moment is one piece of an infinite tapestry. And so we place each event within the light of God's providence and the light of his eternity. And it's true, like someone hurts, you know, hurts me or hurts a loved one, and I can brood on that. And if I think that that moment is absolutized, that's, you know, what's happened, and I just hold on to that. And so I begin to deform my soul, begins to uh, manipulate my behavior. But if I realize, well, that is one moment in a vast, infinite series of moments, suddenly it relativizes it to some extent. And it allows us in that moment to say, well, even in that, that hurt. Where was God? Because God was there, right? Mm -hmm. This surrender to divine providence is the acknowledgement that even in darkness, even in hardship, God was there. And by doing that, we can allow goodness to come from evil, and we can allow light to dispel darkness. But if we brood or get stuck or become overwhelmed by the evil or the darkness or the suffering in our world, then not only do we live miserable lives, but we can never accomplish the task that God is asking us to do or never be the instruments of his grace or of his providence that he's asking of us. 
So what is the end goal for somebody that would take on this retreat as a challenge and, and really dive into it? I think the end goal is to be reminded, renewed, or perhaps to realize for the first time how immensely God loves each one of us. That when the Lord Jesus tells us that every hair on our head is counted, He meant it. That God's providence is radical, it's intimate, God knows us better than we know ourselves. He loves us. He calls us to be with him, to trust him, and then to be instruments of that trust in the lives of others. And mentioned earlier, this is a six-day retreat, but you have a bunch of different ways that you can do this, which I think is very creative and also conducive to a lot of different situations and different ways that people might want to approach this. Can you explain a little bit of the different concepts of how you could go through the retreat? Yes, I, I think our, our spiritual tradition would favor, oh, just go away for a weekend or go away for two days and just you know spend that time in, in relative solitude and be with the Lord. Uh, practically speaking, uh, most of us can't do that uh, right. as a parish priest or as, as a married person. Uh, that, that becomes um, very, very difficult. So while that's the ideal, there are other options. So, for example, one could just do the six days starting on a Saturday, do it through the week, and then conclude with Sunday Mass. It'd be beautiful to walk through these spiritual teachings and then to approach the Sunday Mass in a different way with a greater sense of surrender. Or just to choose one day a week, like, you know, it's going to be, you know, Tuesday I do a holy hour or, you know, Wednesday I'm, I'm with my prayer group or, or whatever it might be, uh, where the person can say, okay, uh, you know, every Tuesday or whatever day of the week it is for six weeks, I'm going to block out that in order to do this day of this retreat. So those are just three options in which it can be done. Of course, there's probably multiple variations beyond that, but the goal is, as you caught on and, and as people will see in the actual book, is the goal is just that people can encounter and appreciate this spiritual wisdom and it comes to those deeper realizations of God's love. So whether it's a weekend or a two-day retreat, whether it's six days in a row, whether it's six weeks on a particular day, however it has to be done, um, you know, the goal is just that the person can have this retreat. Is it better to be done individually or as a group? Well, you know, I'm kind of an introvert, so I kind of like just doing it myself. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know uh, and, and there is a spiritual value to solitude. However, um, there's also a, a spiritual value to solidarity. So it can be done as a group. I, I've already been contacted by some spiritual groups that uh, are doing it together. So whether, you know, like prayer groups, they do it just during, as a part of their uh, weekly meeting. So either one it can be done. Uh, Father De Cassad is very flexible and helps to realize that he originally preached these to a group of sisters. So in its essence, in, in its early uh, genesis, uh, it was a, a group retreat. All right. Well, where can people get a copy of the book so they can get started on this retreat? Yes, uh, from the publisher, Ave Maria Press, or from Amazon, or from any local Catholic bookstore. All right, again, it's called Be Not Troubled, a six-day personal retreat with Father Jean-Pierre de Cassade. Thank you so much, Father Jeffrey Kirby, for sharing it with us today. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Take care. God bless you.